Today we're fixing the habits of a platinum Halo player, just a random anonymous player. We play one life at a time and then come back and break down everything they're missing. If you guys like this content and you want to see more, don't forget to sub. If you want me to break down your gameplay anonymously, you can submit your gamer tag. I got a post in the video description and that's it. Enjoy. Okay, so off the opening strat, we're playing for Top Cat. You can prenade across the map to Long Haul if you like. It's not necessary, but your reticle needs to be pristine, right? Head level. You're ready for the shot through Long Haul here. This is pretty good. They hit two shots. All of these shots you can hit. You got to be disciplined with your right and left stick here. This player needs to use more strafe, especially at this range. Once you hit the first two shots, he knows this player is likely to continue heading to the right. So walk with him with your left stick. Follow this player in mere strafe by walking with him. You can very gently move the right stick down to follow him on the slide as well, but you want to barely move the right stick here because you know the D-scope is coming, right? This player is likely going to shoot you back, and that's going to throw your scope off. If we're moving right stick too much, it's going to throw our aim off completely. So it's mostly left stick following the strafe here. They back down and they reload. We're reloading in the open angle, by the way. You got to watch out for this. And you also don't need to reload in the situation. You got 15 bullets. Just be a turret here. You still have seven shots in the chamber. All of your ammo should be going into the sight line right now. Notice the way that he repeeks as well. Turns out to the left as he reloads behind that right wall. So he's like out and he's down low here. And then watch how it kind of like swerves in. We're actually not on target and we're exposed to a shot. So if this player is pre-firing us, we're taking free damage. Your reticle needs to be set at head level behind the wall. And then you peek out ready to fire the shot here, right? So already with the pre-aim, we're seeing little errors. And timing is a big part of this too. So as he comes down, you can see a player is challenging through the pipe store. He ends up fighting great angle on top goal. This is great. We're getting doing good damage here. We walk into the sight line of pipes and now we're dead for free. You see that one player escape out through that low gold. There's a second player up above. We have to time that first player in our mind. We know that that second player, that, so that first player is likely to challenge here. When you're coming down the staircase, you are solo challenging into unknown space. We don't know where these players are. You need to prenade this doorway, right? This is a 50-50, like just in case there might not be somebody, but if there is somebody there, that's why we use prenades. They give us time to access this area of the map. If that player is there, the nade does perfect damage, right? And then this is our zone. You got to think of the angles that you're playing within when you're taking these fights, knowing that pipes is an open, vulnerable space that we could be challenged from, knowing that there is an angle from C plat in this moment, knowing that if we step too far forward, we expose ourselves to tower. If we have an understanding of where our teammates are, we can kind of mitigate what we're you know, facing here. The biggest thing is to just take this fight from this zone. You know that pipes door you'll be exposed to if you step just a foot farther. Now we're in two fights, right? So this entire, all the damage he's doing could be done from here. This is your zone. Once you've backed him down, turn, you're ready for this guy as well. And if you hit him with an A, that's an execution. That's a clean kill. And then you can play up confidently off your damage here. You don't take this free damage. You can grab the grapple. You can hold the sight line. You can support your teammates on camo all at the same time. But now he's dead to rights. Every time we spawn, where's our teammates? How can we best position ourselves for the situation here? Our teammates are currently on our left-hand side here. One of them is dead, spawning shortly. The enemy is on the other side of the map. This is all unsafe space. Notice the routing that he takes. He goes to his left. He can't see pipes. He's up in the air. He's throwing a nade at, I'm not sure if he thinks somebody might be Whirlpool, right? But now he's airborne. He's committed to an animation. He's in big trouble here. He's going to die for free, no matter how good he shoots, just about. So the way he should play this is just slide out to your right. Get the angle on pipe store early, right here. You play out from this zone. You know to anticipate a fight from pipe store in this situation. You can throw a nade from this zone. If you need to back out, your escape route is just to walk backwards, drop into elevator. By standing in this position, you're baiting, you're delaying time for your team spawn. Your teammate will likely spawn on you and A. There he is. He can play out low. If we're just sit, like sitting here crossing, backing up to stay alive if we need to, our teammate will rejoin us. We can work together to fight through pipes and break out of this deficit situation, right? So instead of jumping in, throwing our nades, just simple positioning, get that early sight line. You can nade it if nobody's there, but have your aimer on it, on that door, ready for Whirlpool, easy escape options. A 
Again, where's the team? What's the state of the game, right? We got an AC hold currently. We got one teammate dead in front of us. We got one across the map as well in C, and we have one currently fighting for the cap in B and batteries. What's the best positioning we can have here? I would go up the bat ledge immediately and just bait my teammate in B and sit here and just look to help him if he needs any help. Because we have A open and because none of our team is in A, I would keep that in mind that that's an open spawn and something to worry about later. But I would go to bat ledge first. If we do go this way, make sure we notice the grapple on the ground. That's important. If you do head to A, though, you still have to be ready for a fight in A because we have no team presence here. Even though nobody's capping this hill, because we have no team presence, it could be an open spawn point. Somebody could currently be rotating to this hill, so I'd be ready for either the top door or the low door, and I would take this fight from the platform. I would slide jump out to the platform, ready for a fight, and if, if I need to rotate, I can use the platform to slide off of it later. Once he does take the fight, pretty solid shots here. We're not actually using our environment. You can peak shot this if you like, I guess. He does get first shot, though. Really just kind of about icing up and making sure you hit the headshot, but being ready for the fight is what matters. momentum here longer life at this point more components to this one right i kind of like his routing off the opening a little slow but you can clamber up this and then hold crouch jump from a short position release crouch in the air so your legs extend and you hit this as fast as possible and then curb slide off it for a fast uh reach out like into uh to connecting with your teammates here his teammates die on the way to a this is important they're currently capping a he's alone in this position they've got b they basically have the a b setup they got a player in gold here as well fighting out of this is tricky you have to be very aware of your sight lines. You got to make sure you stay alive long enough in tower for your teammates to come back, and then you can push and work together to break out of this. You can't just force it, right? We don't want to just fly across the catwalk. I like that he's throwing nades here. For these nades, you can bank it off the corner of the doorway, and it'll bounce on an angle. It's a better way to get it into A, and actually probably would clean up this player in this moment. But careful walking too far and careful backing up. You're in two fights right now. You need to be aware of gold. You want to kind of stay tight to the door while you throw these nades. Watch out, they're left-handed nades. So you don't want to get caught with a left-handed nade here. But stay tight to the wall on the way through and lead with your reticle. Your reticle has to go to top gold ASAP. I can tell he's not ready and he's not thinking about it. Already, you should be looking at gold here. At a high level, you're headshotted at this point. This player has the shock, right? As he backs out the angle, collect the, the commando, pocket it, turn, Prenade off the floor if you want to, just in case somebody goes from A to the doorway. This could definitely happen, but the big thing is you're at a pivot point. You know, you're making sure that you're ready for this door when you back up, and then you turn, radical leads, you reach out and you peek this and take as little damage, damage as possible. We're baiting and staying alive here and giving our teammates time to rejoin us. Here he is, right? We got a teammate coming into tower. We can start to work together to break out of this. He notices somebody's in C, and then he drops down and notices that the player dies. That'll show up in the kill feed. That's important, though, too, is we're four up and they're one dead. So even more reason to challenge. Don't forget about your teammate in tower, right? So that one teammate sitting in tower here is looking to make the push. And if we're working together, like I would immediately turn around, get back on top of the box 
watch low A and the nades. You can maybe shoot the nades, but you're just ready to capitalize off this situation and not, not leave the teammate. Luckily, Rabbit Squirrel here is, is available to work with him instead, but we're out of the field to play by not rejoining the team in the situation. Our other teammate wins his fight in the 1v1. Great. We're in between it. They win their way to A. This is perfect, right? The only unaccounted for area of the map right now as we push up is Whirlpool Pipes area, right? They can come through Bat Ledge and Whirlpool. So we want to watch it with our reticle as we come through. We're ready for this. We can get into B. When you're in B right now and you want to survive here, never stand in the center. Always play very tight to the highest the tall batteries. Because if you play tight to a tall battery, you can clamber it and you can crouch jump out to safety. This would be the safest one. It's the fastest way to get out to pipes if you need to. But just try to stay near the tall batteries. Don't stay in the middle. You know, stay in a peak shot kind of uh, angle so that you don't take any free damage. You can ready yourself for fights here. He's waiting on C. So like there was a player, right? They didn't catch each other. And this player went through Whirlpool into A. You're going to see that on your kill feed. You're going to see that he's now capping A in this situation. I probably would have just gone straight to A. Generally, in this game type, you want to control A, B in the setup uh, if you can, right? Like, this is just a better uh, area of the map with more complementary sight lines. If we can keep control of this and keep spawning them C, it's just going to give us more opportunities, especially at this level of play. You definitely want to prioritize A and, uh, a and B if you can. So we kind of back off and we let him out. We know that that player is dead as well because we would see the fact that he's capping. So if we're going to back off like this, you're reticle. You're walking backwards like this and you're watching it now, right? You got to be so disciplined with the reticle placement here. We're not. There he is. We could actually be shooting him right now potentially as well as we come out here. Looks like the C cap got saved. So they'll collect that. Camo's coming up. The only time in the game where it makes sense to have a BC like this is really when Camo's coming up. So we don't have to play for A anymore at this point. I would play from long haul and play for the support of the camo. That's the primary thing that we're making sure we get here so we can run back to long. Once he hits the shot, you know where he's going, right? So just reposition the reticle to the door and then shoot him again to the door, right? See, so we look down, we're kind of looking at our teammates here and then we're reloading in the angle. Once again, we have 13 bullets, right? So no need to reload. Efficient with the reticle. Shoot your way through two, two long hauls so we can reposition. There you go. We know camo's coming up. We know they're in C. Remember, you can crouch jump this with your reticle ready for C. Take this fight. Don't forget about camo, though. They just got the trade. Don't have to worry about C anymore. Camo's being collected right now. I would slide off this plat, turn in the air, and land here and take this fight from here. The only angle I'd be worried about from this position is bat ledge potentially third partying me, but I can just step backwards to the back of stacks and stay alive. I'm just trying to take advantage of this opportunity to cut all sight lines and get an isolated kill on this guy and make sure he doesn't get camo for free. We're watching that, right? In the back of our head, we, we'll know if somebody's in C, if they step on it. We know somebody's in B right now because we'll see the progress, like we hear it, right? So it's like giving us important information. We let them get camo for free here, right? So they currently have camo. We're nading. The camo player is getting away, right? He's up on the box right now. We, a nade just came in, which tells us they're coming from tower, right? So we're going to get shot in the back by this guy. There's the camo player who just opened fire on B. We're getting shot in the back now. It's kind of chaotic at this point. Good shots. Teammates in A, he's trying to get the map back. I don't know what's going on here. This is... Okay, we're wrapping around silo. Teammates in A right now trying to uh, to fight and control the map here, right? He's about to be alone. And we're just, we're, we seem to be not sure what to do with ourselves. So we want to take advantage of this opportunity to rejoin our surviving teammate and keep up the pressure, right? So immediately I would fly towards him. Generally, when you are down numbers, try to get close to your one surviving teammate and do it quickly. We're definitely spending too much time here. I think maybe he's looking for camo or something. Maybe is his, his like issue, but we got to pay attention to our teammates here, right? Like he's currently in a gunfight. Our teammates are spawning on top of us, which is the game telling you that it is very safe here. There's no enemies currently pushing us, right? So this is all an indication that we got to push out and get space on the map. You got to notice this. You got to be quick and efficient. Nice big kill here. Spot the player. That was the camo player up here, by the way. This is your zone. You can peek this and cut this sight line and make him work for it. You don't have to expose yourself like this. You can stay tight to this sight line, make him work very hard to kill you. Team help gets us through this, though, still. This is fine. We're getting into A. As we live and escape here, we're playing within teammates' sight lines. Teammates are right here. I would live in the back of elevator right here. Cut all the sight lines. You can work off of them. If we go this way, this is unknown open space, right? There's a chance somebody could be in pipes ready to push us. We might die for this. We get lucky. He's going to come back, rejoin the fight for the help with the teammate. Great. We got a killing spree. Still cooking, right? But there's a lot of components to this on like what we can do to really capitalize and be efficient. Making sure he's ready. Got a pretty good setup going here. We've got our teammates on pipes. We've got... So somebody wants to get to gold and just hold down gold and we're in, we're in a good spot, right? You can just continue to play from the top A door and just kind of jiggle peek it and be a nuisance. Nice. Big kill. Nice double. 
this is good. Like, I like our positioning. We The team needs to be aware of, like, where to put themselves, right? So we've gone too far to Whirlpool. Somebody should have stayed back and anchored gold to begin with here. Shock is up as well. But, like, positioning and noticing this in this moment is so important. If you're this player who's the farthest back and you see that A is under control and it's covered, stay here. Don't leave that positioning because now we're going to give them space. And we're lucky that nobody comes in and fills that, right? Like, they're going to come push back out. You got to be careful with how you control this area. You can see that, like, okay, so here he is on top gold. See where this guy is. He's going too far now. If he pushes too far out with his teammate already in top gold, the pipe spawn opens behind us. This is your zone. This player right here, stay here. Watch these doors. Get ready for the cutoffs. You can get ready for top cat. Just play this zone, right? Like, don't leave pipes open. And then if you're pushing out from tower, know that you can open up A at the same time. So he's pushing out to tower right now. If we were to leave and let's say, like, join him down low tower like this, which would... Be a, be a good compliment we would open a though that's something to keep in mind like you open spawns if you push too far right so just uh just knowing that knowing that like the low angle is the one area that we're not looking and we can't be seen from you do end up hearing him slide down low i'm pretty sure coming with a three shot beat down but if you know he's there you can sit on the box and just wait you know like you can make sure that this guy does not get the trade in this situation either way much better life winning this game but so much more you know that could be said could be broken down and that's kind of the beauty of uh you know just how deep this game really is and that's it for now just a small slice of gameplay and a lot of information so hopefully you found it informative if you're looking to learn more about halo the best way to support this channel is through my patreon i've got exclusive content there i've got one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions you can book a session with me as well i've got one or a link to it in the video description if you have suggestions on what you'd most like to learn in halo you can let me know in the comments the ones with the most likes i'll definitely see uh but otherwise that's all i got if you guys want more videos on this series, right beside me, this is the way.